All right, let's talk more about the business of pets. Our next guest turned an Instagram account that posts cute pictures of dogs. I've tried to get my dog Titan onto the onto the Instagram page into a profitable business that is also now giving back. We're joined now by Matt Nelson, founder of We Rate Dogs. And Matt, I had to mention that in case you want to post Titan somehow yeah. on. I've now pressured you that. into it. <laughs> so so yeah. Matt, um, how did We Rate Dogs really, you know, come to be? And when did you realize that it could actually be just more than an Instagram page, but really a profitable business? Yeah. So really, it started with me being on Twitter and using it as a creative outlet. Like I wrote jokes uh, and found a community of writers trying to do the same thing. And then I've always loved dogs. I soon realized that my jokes that had to do with dogs or even showcasing my own dogs did really well. And so when I was a bored college freshman, I started We Rate Dogs and had about 10,000 10, followers on my personal account to market it to. And it just it just blew up immediately. It was like the perfect storm that that Twitter must have been waiting for. <laughs> so you did so well, Matt, that you actually left school, right? I don't think you graduated college because you were already making six figures with with your uh, with this app, so um, tell me how you decided to monetize what you what you had there as a freshman. Of course. So initially, it was obviously to uh, like the, it was just to make people smile, and then it would soon became uh, like we experimented with making some stickers in an e-commerce store based on some of the more popular posts, uh, and people really embraced that. And then it's probably a year after the account started that we made a full e-commerce store with like the best phrases and and things from the account that people really loved. And so that's how the audience kind of embraced that initial attempt to monetize. And then soon we realized that our community uh, was way more powerful than just uh, like liking and retweeting dog photos. Uh, and we kind of pivoted to, to these GoFundMes that we do every Friday. So talk to us a little bit more about that um, because I've seen, and I actually do follow your page and your account. So I was very excited to chat with you today. Um, and I've just noticed the ability um, of you guys to essentially crowdsource money and, and funding to really help a lot of dogs that have gotten injured uh, to really talk about pet insurance and other things. So talk to us a little bit about that component of giving back, uh, how much money uh, you guys have been able to raise and, and to give out to other dog owners, and, and what's next, really, in terms of giving back to the pet owner community? So to date, and we really started this, this GoFundMe effort uh, with the first Friday of 2017. So in those four years or so, um, we've raised over $1.6 million and have been able to help hundreds of dogs, uh, which is amazing. I'm not sure how I curated a, a community that is so empathetic and, and passionate about dogs, but uh, it's been wonderful to see. And yeah, every Friday. And, and so these are mostly for dogs that need unexpected surgery or treatment. And that can range from from $4,000 to $20,000. Pet healthcare is very, very expensive. So, uh, but my audience sees that goal. They understand how GoFundMe is gamified and we try to gamify it even more. And we're able to, to raise that money in minutes. Um, I think we've raised upwards of $10,000 in, in 15 minutes before. It's really something to, to watch uh, unfold. And uh, with, uh, we have a, a new partnership with Trupanion, which is medical insurance for, for cats and dogs. And because we've been so so consistent with these GoFundMes, it's easy for us to pivot and say, hey, guys, we would love to be sent less of these GoFundMes. So please consider uh, pet insurance, uh, because in most cases, it can alleviate some of this financial burden. So again, thanks to our partnership with Trepanion, every Friday, we're able to fund a second dog ourselves. Um, we Rate Dogs covers the bill for someone. And instead of asking our entire audience to to uh, crowdfund this dog, I just tell them to please consider pet insurance so that you're not uh, in a predicament where we would have to, to post your dog. Uh, Matt, of course, this is all a part of our, you know, business of pets, of course, because today is bring your dog to work day. Mine decided to sleep instead of join me here uh, for this interview. Uh, but curious to know, because we were just showing some some figures, some stats right there on how much money is really being spent on dogs, but also cats and other pets. I'm curious to know, especially after the year like the one that we just had how much you see pet owners really just spending more money or, or expanding into pet ownership. Where do you see this industry going since you started it? So some, it's been, it's been 
wild to behold, like people, the growing love for dogs and treating them more and more like a member of your family is as a dog lover, it's amazing to see. Uh, and so I think that number will continue to increase as they're treated more and more like uh, a member of your family. And as people have less kids, like dogs are considered uh, uh, for a lot of people, their children. So I think that that'll continue to grow and hopefully it'll grow in a responsible way. During the pandemic, we were inundated with pandemic puppy submissions uh, from people that had more time on their hands and went and got a puppy. And we hope that our community is uh, is not the type to return those dogs once they have to go back to work or return to their normal lives. Uh, but that has been unfortunately a trend that, that we've seen uh, and just hoping that that uh, at least the members of our community have been have been responsible in that choice and, and actually do treat them like their family uh, and, and aren't, aren't making that return as soon as life goes back to normal. Well, you, you definitely honed in on something here, Matt, and I'm just curious if other companies in this space have come to you with buyout offers, or they want to sort of envelop your brand into theirs uh, for, we rate dogs, you know, have you gotten those sort of, um, inquiries and do you entertain them? We do entertain them. I think that it's still my baby and I love the creation. They're the uh, creative part of it so much that it'd be hard to give away. But with partnerships like Trupanion, and then we also have a long-term partnership with Just Food for Dogs, with it, which is a, um, a pet food company. Uh, I think with, with those partnerships, it's allowed us to kind of be um, a little bit more independent with our creative. Uh, and having um, like those two choices uh, are, are very, very aligned with our mission of just celebrating dogs in general. Um, I think that having pet insurance and feeding your dog a quality uh, quality food are what helps you celebrate them and, and help them live longer. And so those, those very purposeful partnerships are, are not made by accident. And, uh, I think we're, we're looking forward to, to continuing to create a community that is, that is, that loves their dogs and does what they, uh, what they, what they can to, to make them happy. All right, Matt Nelson, founder of We Rate Dogs. Thank you so much for joining us, but also for bringing the world just a ton of cute dogs for us to all look at.